perspective. Now, how do we deal with this dunya and navigate this dunya? How do we navigate this world that we're living in with all of its trials and its fitnah? How do we deal with this? If we go back to Surah Al-Kahf, I believe the answers are in all of the stories that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shares. Now, there's a few lessons that we can take. Now, when I'm giving, when I'm giving my, my, my tadabbur and my reflection upon these stories, don't think that this is the only lessons to be learned from these, these stories that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shares. The, the lessons are numerous. But if you look at these, reflect upon these stories with the lenses of the subject that we're dealing with today, you will see some very amazing insights. Let's start with the first story that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shares, which is the story of the people of the cave. Very interesting story. There's a group of young people, again, youth, youngsters, those that are really tested by the dunya, by the world around them. They live amongst a society where they're worshipping idols, they're worshipping other gods and deities and so on and so forth. Right? What do they do? They stand up in front of this tyrant, their tyrant ruler who's getting people to worship these idols, and they, clar- they declare that they worship Allah alone. And what do they do after they do this? They leave the dunya and they go into the cave. Young people, they leave the dunya, the material world, all the material luxuries, and they go into the cave for the sake of Allah alone. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what does Allah do in return for them? These ain't prophets, these are, these are just youth. Not different from any of us here today. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do for them? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala takes them out of that time and space. 300 years or 309 years, depending on which calendar you look at. 300 years into the future. SubhanAllah. Allah changes the laws of physics, the laws of reality for these people that stood up for the truth. One lesson we could take from these brothers and sisters is, when it comes between choosing between dunya and standing up for the truth, always stand up for the truth. Give up the dunya. Give it up for the sake of Allah and Allah will replace it with something far greater. And have no doubt in this. Allah will definitely replace it with something better. Never doubt that for a second. Second lesson we learn. Go to the story of Zulkarnain, right at the end. Here's the opposite now. Zulkarnain is a man who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is blessed with immense wealth, immense power, immense rulership, overlands. What does he do? Does he just say, you know what, I'm going to throw this dunya away, I'm going to go into a cave and just worship Allah and become a monk? No. What does he do? He uses the power and the wealth that Allah has given him and he uses it in the path of Allah. He travels the earth, he helps people. He takes care of people. He actually stands up as a vice president, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says when he addresses the angels. He fulfills those shoes, he fulfills that role. He helps people and when for example he puts up the barrier, when he puts up the, the, the barrier, what does he say? This is from the mercy of Allah. He always ties everything back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He acknowledges Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He acknowledges the fact that Allah is the one that gave him power. Allah is the one that gave him the wealth. Allah is the one that gave him the money, the, the wealth and everything that he had. And he acknowledges Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So lesson to be learned from this brothers and sisters, at least one lesson is, if you have wealth, if you've been blessed with money, if you've been blessed with power, then use it for the sake of Allah. Spend it in the path of Allah. This is a means for you to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and gain reward. Let's go to another story of Musa alayhi salam al Khidr. Very beautiful story again. And this story in itself, you know this whole problem of evil that atheists throw at Muslims and say, oh, if God exists, then why is the evil in the world? Read this story. It, it absolutely annihilates it from its very foundations. Beautiful story, Musa alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him to accompany Khidr. Because Khidr has been given certain knowledge that Musa alayhi salam doesn't have. So as he accompanies him, Khidr points out to him that you're not going to be able to be patient with me. I'm going to do things, you're not going to like them and you're, going to, you're not going to be able to be patient. So what does he do? He goes with him, he accompanies him, they go on a journey. Khidr does a few things. For example, he makes a hole in a boat of a poor fisherman. You know, and Musa alayhi salam jumps at these things. He's like, why are you doing this? You know, you're you're just, just destroying the property of some poor person and his livelihood. And he does a few things and Musa alayhi salam can't understand and he jumps the gun and he asks him, why are you doing this? And then at the end of their journey together, Khidr lets him in on the reasons behind the things that he did. He, he lets him into the wisdoms behind the reasons, the reasons behind the things that he did. Certain things that, Mu, that Musa alayhi salam didn't know at the time. And then things fall into perspective. Okay, now I understand what you did these things. But a lesson we can learn from this is when it comes to this dunya and the way things happen in this life, have patience. 
Put your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah knows best and He wants best for all of us. He wants best for all of us. If we understand this, brothers and sisters, whatever happens in our life, even if you don't understand it, even if it seems unfair or just you can't make sense of it, put your trust in Allah, be patient. Don't jump the gun. Don't do what the atheists are doing. They see something happen, oh my God, why is this happening? God must be evil. It makes me laugh because it makes me think, SubhanAllah, you as an atheist are coming across as someone with a lot of compassion. You know, this is bad, this shouldn't happen. Are you, are you trying to say that the one that created you and gave you that love and compassion for people has less compassion than you? Has less mercy than you? Allah wants best for everyone. Just be patient. Allah has a plan. Just go with the flow. Allah wants best for you. Don't jump the gun. Right? When it comes to this dunya, things will happen. You may not understand them. As long as you know who your creator is, put your trust in it. Everything will be fine. Right? And, and I really encourage you, brothers and sisters, to just reflect over Surah Al-Kahf. Now, when I was preparing for this talk, you know, I, I did some research into the word Dajjal itself. Dajjal it comes from that root. What's very interesting is that the word doesn't only mean a deceiver or someone that deceives, but it also means to cover up something. For example, the examples are given when you get tar and you cover up a camel with this black pitch. Or when you have metal and you gild the metal. You know when you put a get gold leaf and you gild metal with gold? and you cover it, that also comes from the same root. And it's interesting when you look at the reality of this dunya that we live in, that all the glitz and glamour, the way the shaitan is making it alluring to us. He's beautifying this. Right? You know, he's beautifying this for us. So this surah is a very powerful protection from the, from the trials of this dunya. You know, whether you see it as the system that's been put into place before the arrival of the job, it, whatever way you see it, the fact is that this dunya is distracting us and de deceiving us and deluding us from our Creator. It's taking us away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a world of deception. And the only way we can truly protect ourselves in this time, brothers and sisters, is if we were to hold on to the rope of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again. We've let go of the rope of Allah. The rope of Allah being the Qur'an. His final revelation, which is preserved. Well, like brothers, we don't think about this. You know, as human beings, and I'll end on this point, as human beings, when we understand the value of something, of a system, of a thing, whatever it is, we try to maximize the benefit from it. Right? We we'll maximize the benefit from it. But something has distracted us from the reality that we have the final revelation of the creator of the heavens and the earth, which has been preserved to the word, to the letter unchanged for over 1400 years for who? for us subhanAllah, if you think about it, it's crazy there's people that are spending millions and billions of dollars and pounds on trying to set up these, these radio telescopes trying to receive a signal from outer space from extraterrestrial life forms, right? So millions are being spent we have a message not from another civilization or another creature from somewhere out in the universe we have revelation from the creator of all, the heavens and the earth Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala his words, right among, amidst us, in our hands. In our hands, what are we doing with it? If we really understood the value of the Qur'an, we wouldn't put it down. We wouldn't have time to put it down. We wouldn't have time to put it down. And it's for us. Allah, Allah is free of need, free of want. He's not going to benefit from us, picking up the Qur'an and reading it. We're going to benefit from it. We will protect ourselves. We will make the most of this life. It will protect us from the, the, the fitan and the trials of this dunya. And the reality is, brothers and sisters, you don't have to, you don't have to buy what I say. Keep, if, if the dunya is what you're worried about, if the worldly life is what you're concerned about, and chasing it, carry on doing it. Even if you attain it, what's going to happen at the end of the day? You're going to enter your grave. You're going to be buried. You're going to die. This is a fact no atheist on the face of this planet will de either deny Every single human being is going to die without a shadow of a doubt. A universal fact, no doubt in it. When you die, what are you going to take with you? What are you going to take with you? What, what, even if they stuff all the money and wealth you gain into your mouth and put it in your coffin, what's, what's that going to do for you? It's not going to go with you, brothers and sisters. Anything in this dunya is not going to go with you. The only thing that's going to return with you is the deeds that you do. The actions that you do. Your sincerity, in the, with, your sincerity behind the actions that you do for the sake of Allah. That's what matters. 